And hello to you. It's Saturday the 21st of December 2013. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom Talk Boys and Girls. The last long live show until Christmas Day. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here in the studio, I have my Christmas tree to the left of you. A little Santa Claus hanging behind me in the middle. A little bit of tinsel here as well. Lovely tint. Oh, wonderful, dear. Oh, you, you didn't think I was just going to sit. And, and a new background as well. A brand new background. And the reason there's a new background is because uh, Marge and a couple of... Uh, <coughs> I've got a bit of a cough. The voice is not quite here today. Okay, I have to warn you that. The voice is not quite here. We might not manage the hour, but I'll do my best. Yes, uh, Marge said it looked rather dark in here. And I have to say, I have agreed that for a long time. I, I have thought it's a bit dark in here. But Marge actually bought it up. And ever since then, about three weeks ago, a minute, uh, I've, been, I've been searching for a new background. So I have one now. A lovely sort of bluey background behind us there. I also have my other Christmas jumper on, which is green. And there's a little little penguin on the top little penguin and it's yellow and it's all very colorful and it's all very marvelous and it's not long is it so there we are i have to say um i've seen over the years some alternative christmas decorations and i gotta say they just leave me completely stone cold just a couple of little examples an upside down christmas tree I was working in this place oh, years ago and for some reason they thought it would be a good idea to have an upside down Christmas tree hanging in the centre of the bar and I just thought what's all that about? And I've seen black Christmas decorations I mean <laughs> black a black Christmas tree Black tinsel, everything black. And you, you, you just think, why? And the usual answer is, oh, we thought we'd do something different. Well, actually, most people don't want anything different. They want Christmas as it is. You know, don't try and be clever with upside down hanging Christmas trees and, and black this and, and whatever else. Because it doesn't work. You just end up looking an idiot. People won't tell you that. You know, people won't tell you that you look an idiot, but you actually... <coughs> that's what they are thinking. Now, I didn't realise this cough was going to be as bad as it is. But there we are. Because I haven't been speaking, not till I came up to talk to you today. You know. Glad you all still like it. So, yes, don't don't try the alternative Christmas deco, upside down Christmas trees and all the rest of it. It's all very strange and it doesn't work. You might think it's clever, but you actually look a complete and utter idiot to me trying to change something that's always there for the sake of change. You know, we always get that all the time, don't we? People changing things for the sake of change. Often when I look at computer programs... And I got into trouble with a computer programme last week. As regular viewers to the show will know, the listeners were OK. But those that watched the show uh, were waiting for last Saturday's show. Had to wait almost two days because I updated the software. Oh, yes. Um, the editing software I usually use, Adobe Premiere Elements 9. I had a bit of a problem with it. And rather than fix it, I went on to the... No, Adobe Premiere Elements 7, OK? Rather than try and fix it, I went on to the site and I thought, well, they're up to some... They're now up to Adobe Premiere Elements 12. So it might be a good time to update it. So I did. And then I just could not save the final edited version. It was a blooming nightmare. And actually, I still haven't got it working properly. I've had to go back to the old system. What happens is that when I've saved it, the video shakes slightly. Go just up and down, just, just slightly. You might not even notice it if I don't tell you about it. Once you do notice it, that's it. You can't get it out of your head. Now, I've found a couple of workarounds. 
That is to save it in a different format, but the file size is like enormous. Three gig. Okay? And even with a fast internet connection like mine, uploading that to, to YouTube is a bit of a bit of a thing. I don't even know if they're going to accept a three gig file. So I'll find that out later. Um, the other workaround is to upload it shaking and use YouTube's enhancements, <coughs> which stop shaky cameras. Now, um, I haven't got a camera here except the one in front of me. You know when you're videoing something on your little camcorder or whatever it is, and your hands aren't quite steady? Well, this YouTube enhancement thing will steady it for you. And I could use that. I did actually use it at some point, so... I don't know. So sorry about that. You had to wait so long. But there you are, you know, and, and, and looking around on there, I'm trying to think, well, what's different on this? <coughs> Why have I updated this? Because that's not quite working properly. You see, and you look around and everything's moved. Everything's been put in a different place. And you do wonder if they change things just for the sake of change on a lot of these programs. And then they come out and they say something like, well, it's it's improvements that we've made. We know you'll like it because we've spoken to lots of people. I bet they lie. I bet they haven't spoken to anyone at all. Isn't it? It's like when a, when a government go out and say, well, whatever subject, high speed rail. Oh, well, we've spoken to 200 people and they all think it's a really good idea. And everyone's shouting at the telly, no, it's not. We don't want it. <laughs> They don't listen. They always come out of all this old claptrap, don't they, about about talking to people and, and people in, on the whole agree with it. No, they don't. You never spoke to anyone. I don't believe in any of these surveys. And with surveys, you can kind of tilt them in your favour, can't you? For example, do you think that all children should be given... £25 worth of sweets every day of the year for free. Now, if I ask, say, a thousand people under the age of 10, they're going to say yes, aren't they? If we speak to a thousand adults over the age of 30, they're going to say no. Do you see what I mean? So they can tilt things in their favour. Unbelievable. So that's what they go. So often when people say, oh, you know, so many people say oh, they all agree with us. No, 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 you've tilted it in your favour, you blooming liars. <laughs> OK, well, uh, if you're with us live, you can join in live, boys and girls. Uh, there's an email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Whether you're with us live or watching a recording, you can join in on that number. OK, chris at United, uh, email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you're with us live... Then you can use Skype. You can Skype in. My Skype username is Chris Reardon. That's all one word. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Chris Reardon is my Skype username. There's also a local London phone number. 020 6358 020-8133-6358 is the um, Skype in number there as well. Okay, I'm just trying to trying to bring up my Skype, and so there we are, that's up now. But that's only if you're watching us live. And uh, how do you know if we're live? Well, it's just coming up to 10 minutes past 12 on Saturday, December the 21st, 2013. That's the time where you are now, while you're watching this or listening to this, then you are indeed with us live, and you can join in by one of those methods. I have a Skype, Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, or local London number 020 8133 I, I'm not expecting any calls today because it's the last Saturday before Christmas and my guess is most people will be out doing their shopping today so I don't know how many people are with us I know Wendy's with us this morning good morning Wendy you already sends us a little hello message good morning Wendy hope you're well and Wendy sent me a Christmas card which is very nice came for the post on the front of the Christmas card is a picture of myself and Queen Katie the cat, who is at this moment asleep on the bed. Me and Katie. Mwah! My lovely cat. <laughs> Thank you for that, Wendy. And Wendy says, hope you have a wonderful Christmas and a fabulous new year, especially in January and May. 
Yes, that's when I go and see Barry Manilow three times next year. Once in Florida in January. And once in London and Wembley in London. Lots of love. Okay, much appreciated. <clears throat> um, there we are, just put that down there. I'll drop that on the floor. Be careful, Christopher. I read out the card from uh, Matt and his lovely wife, week, who sent in a little Merry Christmas Christmas card as well. Happy holidays and a happy New Year, love. Oh dear. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. But I think there might be still a bit of dust in the house. Judging from the way I've been sneezing and the sore throat. <laughs> <coughs> We're not going to make it through the hour, are we, if this car is on? Oh God. So the windows are all in and, and, and that's it. Oh, I can't tell you about it now. I, I tell you what, I'm going to go straight to the uh, emails and letters, I think. <laughs> Coughing and spluttering away here. This is not good, is it? Oh, not just a few days before I got my sisters. Because you see, the trouble is there. She's got three dogs and cat and and um, various other creatures up there, known as children, <laughs> which I'm looking forward to seeing. And um, I, I I can suffer with very bad asthma up there. Now, if I'm like this now before I go up there, God knows what it's going to be like while I'm up there. But uh, anyway, fingers crossed. Um, oh, this is that Cyber John there? No, it's not Cyber John. Did I? I thought that was a message came up there. No, no. All right, one minute. I don't want to miss messages. Uh, there we are. Oh, good morning to Mark. Mark Deacon is with us this morning. Good morning, Mark. Are you coming along to the karaoke tomorrow? <coughs> the Black Cap, Black Cap karaoke Sunday nights, uh, eight till eleven o'clock on Sunday nights. Okay. There's Wendy. Oh. <clears throat> Is there something wrong with the microphone? Is there? I don't know. She'll have a little wiggle with the wires. Could you not hear us? Oh dear, Wendy. I hope you could hear us. How much did you lose? Is that all right now? Was there any <coughs> noises like that? I think there's something wrong with his mic, actually. I might, um, it's either the wire or the microphone. Usually the wire. Let me just push a few buttons. Oh dear. Is that any better, Wendy? Are we with you? Are you with the Woolwich? I think you're the only one there today, Wendy, uh, but actually. <laughs> oh, uh, move that over there, one second. Put that there. Put that there. Let me get that over there. That's better. Right, I'm with you. There we are. I can see everything now. I couldn't see everything before, Wendy. It's all going hideously wrong today, I think. Yes, there we are. Is that you? There we are, Wendy. Where's your messages gone, Wendy? There you are. Can you hear us again now? Good. <clears throat> Hello to Brandon. Good morning, Brandon, in sunny Croydon. Who's, who, who's going to get a West, not a Westlife, a Westfield soon shopping centre, aren't you? He's all excited, bless him. I reckon you'll be a fashion person, Brandon, I really do. He won't be up yet, he watches the recording of this. Far too early, isn't it, this to get up for you? Too much to ask for you to get up for your old mate, Chris, doing a show. And uh, Brandon says, hi, Chris. I watched Saturday's show just gone and heard my email being read out. Great, but scary. Why is it scary to have your email being read out? Why is that? 
<laughs> Nearly watched all of your short videos and watched a few of the other recorded live shows. Oh, yes. Um, I'm glad you're still enjoying the short videos, boys and girls. They're all different. You know, they're not like all comedy or all singing. There's a different one every day. I never really know what I'm going to do. I just switch on the camera and start. So there we are. Uh, you can find the short, short videos every day. YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Hit subscribe there and you'll get those all for nothing. <laughs> no one ever paid for the rubbish I do. Okay, youtube.com forward slash Chris Rear in the UK. Brandon says, I'm watching one recorded live show in the morning before I go to bed. Yes, my sleeping pattern is back to front as well, dear. Slow, surely, slowly, but surely I'm getting there. Oh, it'll take you years to watch all those shows, my friend. Years. <laughs> the videos don't go back too far. I think they're about four years. But uh, certainly the audio, is, it's, it's over eight years now I've been sitting here chatting rubbish. Good to know. Ron made an appearance again on the new short video. He is hot. Hot. What, my mate? My mate? Hot. I think you're... Um, uh, uh, <laughs> one minute. Oh, what have I got to do now? Um, right. Hot. I, I don't see him as hot, my mate. Not at all. He gets loads of phone numbers, um, Brandon. I'm afraid. I never get any. I did have someone chat me up on Thursday night, actually. But um, he overstepped the mark. I had to bat him off in the end. It was all right at the beginning. And then he went on and on about play, me playing, because I was DJing at the time, about me playing um, Mariah Carey fantasy. You know, while everyone was dancing. And it's a slow tune. You can't just sl throw in Mariah Carey and fantasy at any point. And I said no. And he went on and on. And he got a d bit touchy-feely, you know. The hand came on the shoulder. Do you know what I mean? Touchy-feely he got. And... But he went on and on about playing this... And eventually I got fed up. I said, you can go away now. Oh, have I offended you? I said, you know damn well you went on and on and on. I told you, I'm not going to play it. It doesn't fit in with what we're doing. Everyone's dancing. I'm not going to ruin it. Oh, they'll love it. No, they won't. They won't love it, dear. Bloody idiot. So I pushed him off in the end. Got a minor. And do you know what I said to him? Do you know what I said to him? I said to him, and it's a shame. I said, it's a shame because actually you quite like me and I quite like you. And this could have gone somewhere, but you've mucked it up. I didn't use that word. I said, you mucked it up by going on and on and on. Now go away. And that was it. Sent him away. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You know, you don't please try. Don't don't get in between me and the people I'm trying to entertain. Because it won't work. I'm, I'm there to do a job and to entertain people, not entertain you. All right? Um, uh, so Brandon says, Ronnie is hot and you're well not bad yourself. I, I think you're looking... Is there something wrong with your eyes, uh, Brandon? Have you had your eyes tested recently? I'm old now. Nobody wants me. There must be something wrong with your computer screen, dear. Get it sorted. <laughs> Ron should make more appearances on the shows. Oh, no, dear. No, I, I don't think that's a good idea. He upsets people. Didn't you see the short video where he called people weirdos? Dear me, I had to hit him for that one. Um, I'm officially a Chris Reardon fan from Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Oh, no. Where's my bin? I've got my bin in here. Oh, we got a Skype message. Hello to Daniel in Aberdeen, Scotland. Okay, and who? Are oh, you having Haggis Christmas Day, Daniel? Who writes, punters sometimes really don't know what goes with what. Only the DJ knows. Yes, Daniel, that's why we're employed to bloody well do it. It's just the stupidity of it. You say no and they go on and on and on. And you try and be as nice as possible. But eventually, after 25 minutes, it starts wearing a bit thin. You know, it really does. 
You can't have... Mar- have you heard Mariah Carey? Lovely song. Nothing wrong with a song. But it's, it's very difficult to fit that in anywhere, to be honest. It's slow. It's slow. They're never going to dance to it. Bloody idiots. Idiots. Hello to James, who says, Hi, Chris. You were talking about it, about Beaties. Now, Beaties was a model... Um, I'll just say model railway shop. It was a model shop. It used to sell electric trains, scale electrics, all stuff that us men love. We love stuff like that. Models. Not those sort of models on page three. Models. Little things. Like little trains. My personal electric train sets. <gasps> love it. Love it. Beatty's, uh went in about 2001, he says. From what I've seen, they ventured into the video game world too, and it all went wrong and they closed. I didn't know that. Yeah, I remember Beatty's. They, they didn't have masses and masses of shops. They had a few, though, didn't they? Blockbuster Video is also consigned to the history books now too. Once these shops were the great shops of their times, but times change and people have stopped going. Well, it's all downloads now, isn't it? Either legally or otherwise. I gather um, lots of people use... Um, oh, what's it called now? Uh, that something, something to download even new films before they come out. Uh, torrents, that's it, torrents. But I, I had a look, I wouldn't have a clue how to work it. Is that difficult? <laughs> One these shops. Um, yes, someone wrote in and said you talk too much. Yeah, some idiot wrote, it wrote in. You don't half go on. Well, it's a talk show, you idiot. You know, what do you want me to do? Just stand here and look pretty? I can do that if you want. It doesn't quite work, does it? It's a talk show. We talk. There's no advertisers to worry about on here. You know, you don't like? Please switch off. I haven't got advertisers to worry about. Primark is not going to pay me for wearing their lovely £10 jumper on today. No one's going to pay me. So if you don't like it, turn it off and go away. That's it. Merry Christmas to you too. I would like to see their definition of a talk show, James says. You were talking about Brighton. I hope Lil was OK. I haven't uh, seen any smoke coming from her way lately from James. Yeah, Lil's all right. She's not doing too bad. She's recovering from a bit of an illness. Lots of people have had illness, illnesses recently. Me with this cold now. Ah, Daniel says he's not having haggis New Year's Day. Oh, I thought you might, instead of, you know using sheep guts you could use reindeer haggis can you can you have reindeer haggis i myself will be having a corn corn roast being vegetarian no turkey will have died Ugh! it fills me with horror to imagine the murdering of turkeys that are going on at this moment and of course christmas cake can i just show you something i've bought for my sister for the dining table Okay, let me show you this. Now, I was in Waitrose yesterday. Do you have any Waitroses in Aberdeen? Daniel, I don't think you do, do you, dear? No. Oh, well. Big box. Right, big box. And I, I was just going around doing my, quietly doing my shopping in Waitrose today with my best friend one, because we do like to create havoc in there, to be honest. And I came across this beautiful Christmas cake, and I'm sorry, I had to have it. And my sister doesn't know about it, so I hope she's not watching. She doesn't watch this. She does. She shows no interest in anything that I do. Here is the Christmas cake. It is just beautiful. It really is. And it's got a, it, it. It's a nativity scene. It's a little, like, I don't know, what would you call it? A little house. They didn't, they didn't have babies in house, did they? Mary and Joseph. They had a stable. I suppose it could be a stable. And um, it's blue icing on the top. With little stars. A couple of stars there. And some yellow dots. There's Joseph. And there's Mary. And there's the baby Jesus. In between them. Isn't that fantastic? I love it. Little nativity Christmas cake. That I'm taking up to my sisters. 
£25 that was, dear. And I thought that was worth the money, actually, for what it is. Very, very nice indeed. Waitrose do lovely Christmas cakes. Um, but I'm not a fan. Let me just put that down there. <clears throat> I'm not a fan of... Uh, Christmas fruit cakes. I find them too heavy and dark and people start mucking about putting brandy in them and all that. I'm not, not keen on those at all. I don't know what you think of Christmas. Do you like Christmas cakes and puddings and things like that? It's just, just not me. So I've got that. There we are. And also to get us into the mood this weekend or this week, myself and my mate, well, we watched my DVD of Hans Christian Andersen. Very old film starring, not Peter Kay, Danny Kay. What was the date on this? I think it's early 60s, possibly the year before I was born. I don't know. Can't see that. Let me have a look at, put my glasses on, have a look at the date here. 1952. Wow. 11 years before I was born. Peter Kay, Hans Christian Andersen. Da, 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 da. It's all, and it's all in the film, The Little Mermaid and The Ballerina and... Uh, the thumb. What's the thumb one? Tom, th Tom Thumb? Tom Thumb. I think it's Tom Thumb. It's all in that film. <clears throat> oh, Daniel says there is actually one or two Waitroses up in Scotland. Is there really in Aberdeen? I didn't know that. Well, go and get yourself one of those cakes. You know the family will appreciate that, Daniel. Eh? Yes. You know, I'm going to keep this show short today because I'm having terrible trouble with my voice. Hope you don't mind. Short show as it's coming towards Christmas. Uh, let's play this audio clip and someone sent in this one second I can find that there it is uh, John Cyber John let's see if I can find that Cyber John there he is Cyber John who we haven't had with us for a couple of weeks he usually sends us in a little audio clip and I got this this morning. It says, hi, Chris, over the illness now for now. Hope this is suitable because John's not been very well for a while. My best wishes to the regular listeners, especially in the United States. I love hearing them. I'll just throw this in while doing my one day a week for the charity depot. I opened up a bag of drill bits that someone had donated and inside was a piece of amethyst. I think that is how we should judge people. Very best regards, Cyber John in Leeds. That's nice, isn't it? Isn't that nice? Anyway, let's have a little listen to uh, hear what Cyber John has to say for us today. If I can find it. Where are we? Well, there we are. There we are. Cyber John. Hi, Chris. I've been away for a couple of weeks because I couldn't rant. Why not? Because of SAD. S seasonal advert. Uh, uh, just, just, just something or other. I, look, I hate winter. I hate its darkness, its lack of colour, and for the strange effect it has on me and on this, hu on this human psyche. Have you ever met a jolly Latvian or a Laplander with an excess of mirth? I haven't. But then, we don't have six months of darkness to deal with. But the BBC did something today. They interviewed someone near the South Pole. And it turns out that six months of perpetual sunlight was even worse. I simply could not be bothered to rant. But I'm back. Now let me get something off my chest. A size 32D bra, which I borrowed from a laundrette off the high street. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm only joking. I, 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 don't, I don't do that anymore. What I hate is cricket. And not because the smug Antipodeans have hammered us. Cricket is pointless. Except it's not, it's full of points. It's all about points. 36 for 3, 123 for 7. I've met people for whom the statistics are more important than the dull bat and ball game itself. It is the sport for train spotters who, with their weak lemony drink, like to make sure they have the number of that rare Deltic Class 5 so they can write it in a book and think they've achieved something in life when they could have been doing what I witnessed today. After three hours working at the charity depot, one 85-year-old woman was willing to travel four miles to take some old sleeping bags down to the homeless centre. They could have been doing that, not writing rubbish in a book. 
I get angry at train spotters because they fulfil nothing except some useless personal fetish. And it is entirely an English one for some sad people. No other country does anything similarly wasteful. Back to cricket. Cricket is also elitist. Like rugby union, it took years before anyone not accredited to a good public school education could be involved. And we still have that posh chap commentating on matches with eight plums in his mouth. The other indication of exclusivity is the fact that they use a special language. He's been caught off the slip. Boda made Nova. Got caught with a googly. Whenever groups devise an artificial set of terms, beware. They want to exclude you. They want to exclude others. Now, I usually do my rants at about four o'clock in the morning, and everything is very clear then, but I can't remember much more than this. I can only remember the following what was... I'm, I'm, originally, I'm sure, a wonderful rant. It goes like this. Women police officers in trousers. I expect them, in my head, to turn around in the street and ask, Does my bum look rubbish in this? My answer is yes. Whether they are American or British lady police officers, they all wear rubbish trousers. I demand more. Finally, your listeners will already be wise to this message, but I will not re- well, no, I will re-emphasize it. Please don't go mad buying expensive presents for your nearest and dearest. The value of a gift is not measured in pounds sterling or dollars. Moreover, it's the research you undertook to find something they didn't expect, or the happenstance occasion in a charity shop that you found something unique. I think they call them thrift shops in America. Or you just took a bit more effort, or you even made something. Or even better, the time you took to sort out the debacle of the kitchen after they've managed the gargantuan task of the Christmas meal. But you got in there, you sorted it out, and you gave your time. And here's a reverse rant. Christmas time brings out the very best in radio, whether it's Chris doing his show, LBC, NPR in America, or the BBC. We really are blessed with freedom and quality talk shows. God bless you all this Christmas. Oh, thank you, John, for your little cyber rant. Happy Christmas to you as well, John. I don't know NPR in America. I haven't heard of that. I'm going, I shall have to look at that, see if they've got any podcasts available for my, my long journeys in the car. Uh, my bum actually looks rubbish in all trousers now. I have to, have to be honest. Used to look nice, but not now. I've gone past the bum-looking nice age. Shame, really, isn't it? Never mind. And um, cricket. <clears throat> You're quite right about the cricket. <clears throat> I've never, ever understood cricket. How on earth anyone knows how anyone else is winning or losing is completely and totally beyond me. At least with football, which also I have no interest in at all. At least it's, it's quite simple. You score a goal, you're winning. The other side scores a goal, you're tied. The other scar scores two goals and you've scored one, they are winning. How easy is that? Even tennis. Just about got the hang of that one now. Why is it 15 love, 30? Why, why isn't it 1 nil, 2 nil, 3 nil? What's all that about? Why do they make it complicated? I know of, now you know I do a quiz night. OK, I do this quiz night in the Mayflower in Rotherhive on Tuesday nights. There are four rounds. It's very simple. A round of mixed questions, a picture round, another round of mixed questions and a music round. Ten questions in each round. Right. You ask a question, you get the question right, you get a point. It's very, very simple. I heard only last night of another quiz, and I won't tell you where it is or who's doing it, because I do know the person, and I know the place that is running it. And it's just so complicated. I can't even remember what this person was telling me last night. The questions are read out, and you get certain points and that. And then... I... I <laughs> When they when they told me, I said, "Well, you what? 
like that, you know. I can't even remember how it was. I must find out more information about that, and I'll tell you possibly next week, okay? Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to think desperately now of what they told me. But it, it wasn't easy. I mean, it just wasn't easy how this, how, this, how this blooming Christmas thing was, how this quiz thing was running. Why do people make it so blooming difficult? It was almost easier to understand a cricket scoring scheme than it was to do this quiz. Strange. Hello, Wendy. There she is. Um, talking of DVDs and films, my favourite Christmas film is It's a Wonderful Life, first released in 1946 with James Stewart's great film. That, isn't that on soon? I noticed Channel 5 are showing lots of Christmassy type films at the moment. In fact, I've got my video recorder set for um, this afternoon. I think they've got about three Christmas films on this afternoon. Mrs. Miracle. Have you seen Mrs. Miracle? That's a nice film. What well, Mrs. Miracle 2 is on. I think it's this afternoon, certainly in the next couple of afternoons. All right. Um, since having my windows done, of course, now I've got to have my walls decorated and painted and new carpet. And this will hopefully happen while I'm away on holiday with my nephew, Jimmy, in the States in January, which I'm looking forward to. My best mate, Ron, is moving in and overseeing the decoration. So when we come back, it's all done. I'm so happy. I haven't got to worry about mess or anything else. He does all the worrying. What a nice friend. No, not for nothing. <laughs> and, of course, we're on the subject now of colours. He says, I should do everything in neutral colours. <clears throat> I know other people will say, you should do everything in neutral colours. And then sometimes the reason given is that if you want to sell a house... You know, people don't like bold colours. Well, I don't want to sell the house. This is my home. I can never really see me moving out of this particular house. I can't see it. Maybe I'll go on holidays somewhere, but always to come back to this house. So why should I worry about whether or not it adds or takes value away? That's another thing I come across sometimes. Like I told various people, I'm having two new windows put in. Oh, that'll add value to the house. Why are you worrying about value to the house? It's a home. Does that matter? Whether or not it adds value to the house? Don't worry about it. If you're in your home, unless, of course, you know you're in, your, you're in a property, let's call it a property and not a home, and it's not really your home, your next move will be your home. Maybe if in those cases I can understand it. But why should I worry about whether I add or take value away from the house if I don't think I'm ever going to move? Doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't matter. But Ron thinks I should have everything in neutral colours. I, I like big, bright, bold colours. OK? In this room, you, you can't see it, but the walls in this room are kind of a, 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 a sort of an, an army green. Ah, uh, yes, like, um, yes, almost identical to my jumper. I have a, a green Christmas type jumper on. That green is the colour of the walls in here. In my bedroom at the moment, that's got to be done because of the windows, I have a rather deep, dark burgundy colour. Quite bold. In the hallway, I have a dark blue bold colour. The whole hall. Except for the wall at the top, which is white. And also one wall in the bedroom is white as well. The dark blue is darker than the blue background behind me. OK, it's, it's not quite, it's not a navy. Have I got anything here, that colour? Let me have a look. Yes. OK, the colour of this pen is, is the colour of my walls in the hallway. No, it's like a dark blue. And I like bold colours, I do. But we were in Sainsbury's uh, home base. It's not, it's not, is it? It's home base yesterday. Just having a quick look at colours. We weren't going to choose any. And I'm taking him to these colours. I said, well, I like all of those. I think there was a, there was a, there was a purple, there was a red... 
there was a what was it like a fire red or something he said no no you can't have any of those well, why not no it's too you make it too dark he says and I'm thinking well what what do you mean I said I really like he said well you can have one wall that colour and the rest of it like a whitey um, like a neutral colour I, do you know, I don't think I'm going to take his opinion into account this time. I might, what I might do is do walls in the colour that I want and then one white wall. I think that detracts from it, if you see what I mean. Anyway, this, um, I think I talked about this in one of the short videos this week that I do. And Marge has responded to this, says, Marge says, what sort of energy... Do you want to go in your bedroom? I usually choose a colour because certain colours affect our mental states. Here are some examples. Red <coughs> is vitality and courage. Orange is happiness and confidence. Green, which I have in the living room, is balance, love and self-control. So I do have a green in the living room. Again, I think it's the sort of green. I think it's just, is it the same green as what I've got up here? I think it is actually. Sure, I didn't even know that, that I had the same colours in the living room and, and this studio. Yellow, which I have in the kitchen, is wisdom, clarity and self-esteem. Well, I have yellow down there. Indigo is mystical intuition and understanding. Uh, I don't really, I don't want blue in the bedroom because I think that would be quite cold. It might feel even colder um, in there. Um, uh, indigo and, and blue as well is health, knowledge, and uh, decisiveness. Well, I'm a bit, I'm a bit indecisive to be honest. Perhaps I need blue. In <laughs> Violet is beauty, creativity, and inspiration. So, whatever type of energy you want in your bedroom maybe think of the colors energy to assist you i love the purple myself as usual ronnie says uh, uh, as i say ronnie says neutral colors and i can have one feature with a bold color i think i'd turn that round the other way that i would have bold colors and one white wall to be honest marge and you mentioned purple. Purple, violet, lilac, they're all similar colours. I'd be happy with one of those in the bedroom. I think I'm going to go for one of those. Violet, purple or mauve. Is, mo is mauve the same as purple? I'm not quite sure. I don't know. Have you got any suggestions? What do you think of that, boys and girls? Eh? Why, why, do you have bold colours in your house? If so, what colours have you got for what? Do let us know. Drop us an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and tell us what colours you've got in your house. <clears throat> Is Ron right? Should I have neutral colours everywhere? A bit boring and bland, aren't they? You know? I, I, I just don't see this, this neutral bloody colour thing at all. I understand it. If, 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 if you've got property... Well, I mean, I've, I've got rental properties, you know, that people rent out and they're all neutral i understand that it's got to be neutral so whoever goes in will be reasonably happy with what it is but this is my home i want bold colors in here you know done properly not I, i'm not i'm not a painter i've got someone coming in to do those i like some bold colors with perhaps a white wall what colors do you have drop us an email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk or if you're quick if you're with us live and it's Saturday afternoon at uh, coming up to a quarter to one, 21st of December 2013, then you are indeed with us live. And you can talk to me live on air by Skyping in, Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Give us a Skype on Chris Reardon, OK? Or local London phone number 020 6358 020-8133-6358. Colours I really don't like are pink. I couldn't have pink anywhere. Oh, God. Brown. Don't like brown. My niece actually did her bedroom with, with a lot of... the. It wasn't brown. She said it was chocolate. It looked brown to me. Chocolate, apparently. She had chocolate. And I really, really didn't like that at all. 
So she had that in her bedroom. And in her bathroom, though, she had different coloured stripes. I thought that looked really good. Ron came and saw that. He didn't like that either. Oh, he's a miserable bastard. He really is sometimes. <laughs> um, I don't, Black. No, absolutely not black. We wouldn't have black anywhere. That's just horrible, isn't it? Black. You couldn't have black anywhere. Ah, Mar um, uh, Wendy says, we have a bold red in the dining room. Husband's choice. Bit dark for me. Yellow in the kitchen, same as you. So there we are. She's got bold colours. I'm going to go along with my own instinct. I'm going to have those bold colours. And I, th I, I, I reckon in the bedroom I'm going to have a, 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 a probably a lilac. A light purple. A lilac in the bedroom. And I think in the hallway... <clears throat> I have a red or purple. That might change. That might change. Okay. <laughs> and Marge also sends in another email this week. Who says, I wanted to share a local newspaper article on Dear Santa Kids wrote in with. I won't post them all, but I wanted to put the ones I found were quite amusing. Does your local paper do the same about writing to Father Christmas? I don't know. I rarely read it, to be honest. Uh, pa local papers are just full of advertisements now. There's, there's barely anything worth reading in them anymore. Dear Santa, I love babies and books. Can I have one of each? Lots of love from Emmy, aged one. <laughs> oh, she can't have wrote that. Children age one can't rewrite, can they? She wouldn't have written that. Dear Santa, ho, ho, ho. These are all letters supposedly sent in by children to a newspaper. Dear Santa, ho, ho, ho. I want to have a big, huge bike to ride all by myself. And I want a bunny because they're pretty and they hop. Boing, boing. I want a dog, a black and white dog. It's going to jump up. I want a red, white, yellow, blue, green, orange and black nail polish. Love from Kylie, age six. Dear Santa, I was a witch for Halloween. I got lots of candy. My mummy works at the pet store where I got two kitties. I got one dog. Where? Why are my kitties black, white and grey? I have a Barbie backpack. I want a doll's house so I can play with it. Love, R really? Riley, age four. Really? Ray, really? R-I-I-E-Y. Might be a misspelling, that one. Dear Santa, will you bring me some toys? Could you find the note... When Christmas is over, we can get our toys. Could you bring my toys to me? Love, Brecken, age five. Oh, bless. Dear Santa, I want everything and a plane from Trevor, age three. <laughs> Dear Santa, I want a Santa doll and a Santa list to go with the Santa doll. I also want a reindeer and a Santa sleigh. Love, Jason, age four. And dear Santa, can I have a fake cat? Because they are soft. Oh, love Sadie, age six. Marge says, anyway, I thought I would just share this. Hope your renovating is coming along well. Well, it's all finished now. It's just decorating now. Have you picked out a colour yet? Uh, well, I just read your thing out there, so... Not quite pick them out. I'm going to go down to the shop again and have another look. Um... Will you be putting flower boxes outside the window? No, I don't need to do that. I've got um, I've got a garden. Don't need flower boxes. You need a telescope now to look out at the forest, or do you have one? No, I've got a telescope. Um, I am surrounded by trees now. Now, because I, I, it was actually last night, I moved uh, my bed back into the um, my bedroom, and I when I look up now, because I'm right under the window. When I look up, I can see the tops of the trees swaying in the wind. It's beautiful. I am so close to the trees now. I love trees, you know that. I love trees. So close. I got, I'm got. i surrounded by tall pine trees here. Like three times the size of the house and they sway 
um, in the wind. It's beautiful. It's beautiful here. Well, I will let you get to the other fans' emails. I've done those. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. At least Katie is not sick this time. Lots of love from Marge in Oklahoma. Thank you, Marge. Funny on the subject of all these Christmas things, I saw a YouTube video this week um, of an American airline. And at Christmas, I think it must have been last year, I guess, what they did is set up this little booth and all the travellers were invited to go into the booth and via a video link talk to Father Christmas right and tell him what they wanted and once the people were on the plane people at the other end of this video link were furiously writing down all these requests that people wanted. And it was all filmed. So it was obviously an advertising thing, but that doesn't matter. It was all filmed. And uh, people will people you know, people start going on about it all being corporate. Oh yeah, that was that was a corporate thing and uh, what whatever, you know. Just would stop moaning and, and just accept the moment for what it is sometimes, I think. I know corporations do everything to keep you buying stuff, like Disney. They're there to sell stuff. And, you know, I think sometimes people that look into something too much miss the whole purpose of the fun. Well, the purpose is to sell you something. But you can look past that. You don't have to look that deeply. Just accept the fun element of it. And stop moaning about them trying to sell you something. So this airline, someone was writing down all these requests. The people got on the plane. Uh, let me see if I can find... I've got to tell you which airline this was. Airlines... Uh, um, YouTube, what am I going to type into this? Airlines Christmas gift. Gifts. Let's try that. That's it, WestJet. Okay, WestJet. It's called WestJet. Right, if you type in WestJet Christmas Miracle when, when I finish the show, and you've got to watch this video. It's just amazing. It really is. Okay, I'm only going to be here for a few more minutes now. Oh, we've done an hour anyway, haven't we? Look, look. So while the people are on the plane... The airline gets to work and starts getting together this Christmas list. And then the people get off the plane at the other end. And as I say, this is all filmed. It's all part of an advertising campaign, which is great. They're standing. They've got off the plane and they're standing now at the conveyor belt waiting for the suitcases. Completely unaware of what's going on. And then suddenly... The conveyor belt whirls into action. But there's no cases. All that come down is wrapped up Christmas presents. And people are thinking, well, that's a bit odd. And then someone notices that one of these boxes is addressed to them. And they pick it off the conveyor belt. So once people have noticed that, they start looking at this conveyor belt. And lo and behold, there are presents for everyone. But these were not the little presents that perhaps, you know, you get when you go to see Santa Claus. When the children see to get to see Santa Claus, they say, oh, I like a bike, this and that. And the Father Christmas says, I'll see what I can do. And then hands them a little box. And it's usually a little cuddly toy or something like that. No. These were the actual gifts that people had asked for. There were bikes. There were 40-inch plasma screens. 
everything that the people had asked for was given to them in a gift. And it can't have been acted. It was, it was just too good to have been acted. And when you saw the people's faces light up as they opened these boxes and they just couldn't believe it. It's a marvellous thing and a very, very clever piece of marketing. But love it for what it is. Don't worry about the marketing. And I say to you for Christmas, don't worry about the gifts. If you haven't been able to afford something for someone, it doesn't matter. I'm sure they're not going to be that disappointed. I'm one to moan about the shops pushing Christmas, this, that and the other, but I don't get involved in any of it. I've ordered a few gifts from Amazon. They're here now. Everything's in place. I've got my sister's gift. She asked for a mixer. One of those great... And a big, big box arrived yesterday. Massive big box. It's got this mixing thing because she, she, she started doing cooking a lot. As, as indeed has my niece. They like making things. Jams, spreads, all sorts of things. I think she's going to try fudge. She's going to try and make me a box of fudge. Wendy saw the airline thing. She thought it was fantastic. You know, and so that's what I've got her. Um, my niece, well, her present is to be taken to see Barry Manilow again in May. My nephew, taking him to the States. But it, it doesn't matter. If you haven't got the money to do these things, don't don't worry too much. You can still have a nice Christmas. Look at Christmas for what it is. A nice family time for all. And I shall leave you on that note, OK? Don't forget the email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You have a lovely Christmas. And uh, don't forget, I shall be continuing to do my short videos all over the Christmas period. And you can find those by going to youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Have a nice Christmas. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye bye. <laughs>